What would happen if you took Sauron from the Lord of the Rings and you brought him over into the Star Wars universe as a Sith Lord? Well, you might get one of these. Hello, I am Ryan the Cyber Hobbit, and welcome to my channel. It's been a while since I've done anything 3D printing related, and so I wanted to do something that was original and mash up my two favorite franchises, Star Wars and The Lord of the Rings. And I came up with this, what I'm calling a Sauron Sith Holocron, or maybe Mordor Holocron, I don't really have an official name for it. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made it and how it works. Also, be sure to stay until the end as I have a giveaway coming soon and you don't want to miss it. Now, if you're saying to yourself, Ryan, what is a holocron? Well, a holocron is an object in Star Wars that is an ancient repository of knowledge and wisdom. It's basically a little glowy thing that speaks to you. If you've been to Galaxy's Edge at Disney, you may have seen that they actually sell Jedi and Sith holocrons, though they are a little small, and since this is a holocron for Sauron, I made mine much bigger. Go big or go home, right? To start off, I found this lovely model on Thingiverse by a user named Azaria. When designing it, she was thoughtful enough to include some blank outer panels to allow people to design their own, so that's exactly what I did. Now instead of having four identical sides, I decided I wanted to make each side unique because why not? I did all my designing in the vector program Adobe Illustrator, and I ended up with a design for Sauron and the Ring, Mount Doom, Baradur, and the Eye of Sauron. After I was satisfied with my designs, I then converted them into 3D models by using Tinkercad. If you've never used Tinkercad before, it's a very simple online tool that can be learned in just a couple of hours. I highly recommend it. I also then took some time to alter the base that was included with the model to add some holes that I'll later use to add some switches and buttons to control the holocron. After that was done, I moved on to 3D printing. Because these models have some fragile looking pieces and are pretty high in detail, I decided to use my resin printer, the Elegoo Saturn II, to print them and reduce the time required for post-processing. I brought the models into a 3D program called Chitu Box to add the necessary supports to hold the model and prepare it for printing. I printed the base and the four outer panels in a standard gray resin, and the inner panels in a translucent red resin. After the couple of days of printing, I gave everything a quick alcohol bath to remove any excess resin and began the long and tedious process of removing all the supports. Then it was off to the UV chamber for a quick sun bath. As a reminder, you can only touch resin prints with your skin after they've been cured. Once everything was cured, I then followed up to remove and sand away any bumps or scarring left over from removing the supports. Also as a reminder, always be sure to wear a mask when sanding resin. You do not want to breathe this stuff in. And as these things go, sometimes you can't foresee the problem until it occurs. I came to realize a mistake in my design. Where I had planned for the red panels to be visible along the bottom edge, it would actually get cut off and not let much light come through. So then my solution was to create another 3D model that would serve as an offset of a millimeter or so, having a double purpose of easily allowing me to line up the inner red panels. Since this was going to be on the inside, I decided to use my FDM 3D printer as I didn't really care much about the quality. Since this didn't entirely fit on my FDM printer, I ended up printing it in parts and then later welded them back together using a soldering iron. And then to clean up the red panels, I also did a round of sanding. 
This had a double benefit as it also seemed to help to add a bit of diffusion. I then followed up with a coat of Duplicolor Red Metal Cast, a transparent spray paint to help bring out an even more red look, as the resin alone was a bit too see-through. And then after 24 hours, another layer of a matte clear coat to add even more diffusion. For the outer panels, I applied two coats of a Krylon Flat Black, and then also applied the same flat black to the edges of the offset panels so that they matched. Once dried, I began thinking about the final look, wanting the holocron to look ancient and used, and decided to tape together the two layers, and then using some rub and buff antique gold, began to do some sporadic dry brushing. It was at this point I started focusing on the internals. My goal was that I wanted programmable lights and sound, a rechargeable battery, and switches for the power. And then, of course, a button to control it all. Here's an overview of all the parts I used to accomplish this. An Arduino Nano for the processor, an MP3 player, a PCB for USB recharging, a 1000 milliamp battery, a 3 watt 8 ohm speaker, a push button, two toggle switches, one for the battery and one for the processor, an 8 GB micro SD card to hold the sound, a capacitor for the LEDs and some resistors, a micro USB extension cable, plenty of multicolored 20 gauge wire, and some addressable LEDs. Now I'm not going to explain every single step for putting this all together but I made a wiring diagram that explains how everything is wired together. I know many people might be scared to try something like this, but I promise, soldering is only slightly more difficult than using a hot glue gun. Instead of melting glue sticks to hold things together, you melt a tiny stick of metal to hold things together. Next up was one of my favorite parts, but is probably the most boring thing to film for a YouTube video, the programming side of this. Watching someone explain Arduino code is extremely boring, and this isn't really a tutorial for that, but I did include a link in the description of this video to a GitHub where you can find all the source code should you choose to build one of these yourself. Also, I highly recommend testing everything first using a breadboard. Instead of doing any soldering, you just plug wires into tiny holes. Now, through the power of editing, once I snapped my fingers and had everything soldered, I came to realize I had no idea how I wanted to arrange the LEDs inside the holocron. So, back to 3D modeling. I came up with a sort of 8-sided tower type thing that would give me some freedom to experiment. My idea was to put six LEDs on each side of the tower, separated by about seven to eight inches of wire that runs through the inside to allow me to have them all start at the bottom. I also then put four LEDs on the top, making this have a total of 52 LEDs. Once the electronics were sorted out, I got back to the assembling of the panels. Pretty simple, I used some Gorilla Super Glue Gel to hold together the three parts for each side. Once those were done, I then moved on to installing the electronics in the base. I used some failed prints to hold up the button and switches to the correct height, and then used some hot glue to hold them in place. Once in place, I then secured them with some J and B plastic bonder to make sure they could never move. Then it was just a matter of hot gluing the rest of the items in place. I then off camera hand painted most of the internals a black color to make sure they can't be seen through the side panels. I also came to realize that since I had made the panels thicker when I added the frames for the inner panels, I knew that there would be pretty big crevices along the edges. So then I printed, sanded, welded, and painted these little seams. They should also help to cover up any light leaking through the edges of the panels. So then the only thing left to do 
was to attach the panels and seams with some super glue and hot glue. After that, I was done. Okay, so now I'm going to give a little rundown on how everything works and what it can do. So on the back side here, I call it the, the back side because there's a little section for the toggle buttons, the USB, this is a micro USB port to charge it, and this is the control button. So the reason that there are two toggles is because I wanted to make sure that there is absolutely no draw coming from the battery, meaning the left one is actually responsible for turning on the battery. So you can see when I switch that on, there's actually a little light in the corner right there. That means that the battery is on and connected. And then the middle button here will turn it on. So when I turn it on, give it a second. So hopefully you guys can hear it. So you press the little button right here once and it will change the animation. When you press the button once, it will change the animation and play a new sound bite. I have 13 sound bites that I went through every single movie, uh, including The Hobbit, and ripped out any kind of audio clip I could find of Sauron speaking. Besides that, there are actually two different uh, songs that play from The Lord of the Rings. So um, if I just keep going, see. New animation and a new sound bite, please. I'll just kind of quickly go through them all here. So this is now going the opposite direction, rotating the LEDs. So if I press it again, now it's going to kind of pick any random direction that it wants. Press it again. Now it's just a solid color. And then now it goes blue. I'm not actually going to play every track because I don't want my video to get taken down. Okay, so pressing once makes it go forward. One song and one animation. Double tapping it 
makes it go backwards. So you can kind of go backwards through the animations and the sounds. So as you can see, the way it works right now is it will play one sound and then when that sound is over, it doesn't play anything else. But if you hold down the button, it will turn off the sound completely. So this allows you to cycle through the animations, but there's no sound playing in case you wanted it to be muted. But if you then hold down the button again, it now puts it into a repeating mode. So on its own, it will continue to play over and over and over the same exact track. I don't really have to, I guess, demo that. You guys just need to trust me because I don't want to make this part take too long. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you hold down the button again, it will turn the sound off again. But now if you hold it down one more time, it's going to start at the very beginning of all the audio tracks and it will play through every single audio track one after the other. So that way you kind of have a mode that you can play one sound, you can repeat one sound, or you can repeat all the sounds. And obviously you can keep pressing this while it's in this mode to go to the next track. And then hold it down again to turn off the sound. And then hold it down again, and it'll go back into the first mode of just playing one sound and then stopping. So I know that was a little bit cumbersome, um, but there's a reason I wanted to go into detail for that. And uh, I'll say why after I change my camera around. If you want to make one of these yourself, uh, in the video description you can find a list of everything that I used and a link to a GitHub repository. That again has the list of everything I used and the source code to make everything work. So lately you may have seen that I haven't been uploading as often as I normally do. And that's because I haven't been just working on this. I've been working on this. That's right. I didn't make just one. I made three of them. So I'm going to be giving two of them away because I only really wanted one, and uh, just through the course of doing things, ended up making two. In order to enter my giveaway, you need to, first off, be a subscriber, obviously, like this video. Then, uh, you need to send an email to thecyberhobbit at gmail.com. And in that email, you need to include a specific word. That word has been hidden in one of my last three videos. No one has found any part of it. No one has found uh, anything. There's been no no comments about this word, so I'm pretty sure it's pretty good. It's pretty well and hidden. So, yeah, you have 48 hours in which to do so from the time of this video airing. Um, after which case, I guess that will be Friday that I will do a drawing for the winners. I'm probably assuming not many people are going to be able to find it. Maybe, maybe they will, maybe I'm completely wrong. But no one's found it yet, so I guess it's pretty well hidden. Anyway, like I said, there's a hidden word in one of my last three videos. And the only really hint I'm going to give you, I guess it's not really a hint, it's more of a helpful thing, I guess that's a hint, right, is watch the videos on a big screen. Maybe that'll help. Anyway, uh, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you guys liked it, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up. Um, obviously, subscribe if you want to enter my giveaway, but also subscribe if you want to support me. Or just keep watching my videos. I really appreciate it either way. Until next time, bye-bye.